The prequel that nobody wanted, but we got anyways, dropped today on Netflix, and I could say that I was mildly entertained. But before I continue with my review, please consider this your spoiler warning because I will be talking spoilerish ish So let's get on with my review. If you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the prequel to The Army of the Dead, Zack Snyder's follow-up to Army of the Dead, Army of Thieves. Why he chose this character to make a prequel? There was far more interesting characters to make a prequel for, but he chose this one. I mean, maybe I missed the boat. Maybe a lot of people love this character. He was on, on for me, he was like a small footnote in the story. Yes, I understand that he was the one that opened the safe. And I guess that became interesting to a few people, but I, I don't know. It wasn't my cup of tea or he was in my cup of tea. There was other characters that I relate to more. And again, I, I would much rather see the story of Bautista and his wife and his daughter's, you know, prequel before this one. So is he going to make a prequel for every one of these characters? I don't know. So. Anyways, my small rant over with. Uh, the acting was great. I'm I'm all for a good bank heist movie. And I'll, I'll be honest with this. Out of all the bank heist movies that I've seen, this is probably the top. And just let's just leave it at that positive note as far as bank heist. Because there has been some duds this year as far as bank heist related movies. But this one was probably the best, if not, you know, top two for sure. Now, I am glad that Hans Zimmer, I mean Hans Zimmer, uh, that Zack Snyder chose to do away with that flare lens or maybe not the flare lens, or whatever freaking lens, the blurry, you know, focused and going in and out. He used it sparingly in this movie which i could appreciate and you saw that towards the end when we have the uh, clip from um army of the dead at the end how just that glare cam just kind of takes away from the film you're like why is this you know does everything look so grainy around around the edges just takes your focus away from the main character so i was really not surprised but more or less appreciative of him not using that in this film. Now, as for the the story, it was plain. It was pretty straightforward. There was these series of safes that this brilliant person made a long time ago, and there was a whole dark history to them. And he is obviously the the cream of the crop as far as crack. Of the safe crackers, or I don't know if that's the term that he used, safe breakers. Anyways, so he's the one that can, that rises to the top because there's like some kind of underground safe cracking contest, which was ridiculous in the beginning. I was like, okay, and there's like all these people there and cheering them on and betting. And it was just the concept of that is like, wow, okay, what, what upper chillon or what? upper class people that have all this extra mo mo uh, money just go to a, a contest like that and say, you know what, I'm going to bet on this. But And it's, like I said, pretty straightforward. They move through the motions. Yeah, they get a little obstacles. There's a little love interest. And at the end of the day, uh, our hero escapes, but without heartache. He, he can't be with his girl. And that leads to more questions than answers because the zombie outbreak was fairly restricted to uh, Las Vegas as far as what we got from Army of the Dead. So where, why didn't he go after his, his girl? You know, at the end, like, oh, come find me. You have the money, but he doesn't. He just opens up his little, you know, locksmith business and he kind of just goes goes away to oblivion and then we know he dies in the movie or he locks he gets locked in the safe like his mentor did which is i guess some kind of ironic poetry that snyder was going for but 
I he missed it on that part. Now, the actor that was playing Sebastian, he could play freaking Loki on the Marvel side. He they they have such similar facial structure and hair. I enjoyed his acting. I enjoyed the his goofiness and nerdy and spastic side of him and i think it was a really really well acted movie from all parts now i will say this that brad cage guy tell me if i'm wrong but i think he could play a wolverine in the new mcu and i know i'm hitting on too much mcu stuff but when i saw him i was like wow he could he could be wolverine and he's a little bit tall or on the tall side, but he could definitely pull off. He has that huge Ackman kind of look, and I think it would fit the the aesthetic at least is having you know the next best the next the next best thing to having a huge Ackman. I think would be this guy that that played Brad Cage. Uh, you have to do a little bit of bulking up and a little bit more polishing up, but I I thought it was you know I thought he would be a good doppelganger. I thought the way that it was shot like a comic book, it was it was very good positive in, in this movie. The the way it was, the pacing, it, it helped the pacing along. It didn't have a lot of pacing issues, which a lot of the Zack Snyder movies do not have that problem. He, he gets pacing in movies and how to keep us engaged. Because I was engaged, like I said. Uh, the movie's, I think, two hours and nine minutes, somewhere around there. And But it flies by because it's entertaining. He has a great cast, and, and he definitely understands it. And the way he shot the movie, again, a little bit more, a little bit towards the comic book side of it, I'm, a, I'm all for it. So, at least for me. But one of the questions that I had was, why was he dreaming about zombies? And I get it. It's a prequel. And even one of the girls that was probably the most entertaining, not 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 a Z Sebastian's love interest uh, from Game of Thrones, but the the little the nerdy tech girl, the one that says that, it, you know, if she want if Sebastian wanted to make out with her and he was like, no. And he kind of pokes fun at her. Like he was kind of, she was kind of like, oh, maybe it's a prophetic way of, of how you're going to die. So I thought the way Zack Snyder was doing that was kind of cheap, knowing that we already had seen the army of the dead. Like it's going to be like, oh, look, like it's like hiding an Easter egg to something that we already saw that doesn't work. It's the same way that unless it leads to something more down the line, then it's just a waste of why put it in there because we're like oh we get it he yeah he, he is gonna be there at the end with the zombies but the way it was forced on there you're like all right kind of dumb and then the ending was was very much of a letdown it, it was all good until the end because they had such a head start right and they don't stop and then when they're ready to go on the boat, they made their getaway and everything's going perfectly. Of course, we knew that this was happening or this was going to happen. But then when the co the cop catches up with them, the first thing I was like, how? How does that even happen? He, the cop stopped, went with the other, you know, the other uh, co-conspirators conspirator, of the heist, the double crossers. They stopped there and do that. Our heroes did not stop whatsoever after they moved. They would have got into the boat. They just kissed. So you're telling me that the kiss in the car was the reason that the cop caught up to him. And how did the cop know where they were going? They hid. They drove. Uh, I it, like again, so many, so many questions and answers. And then why would the cop let Sebastian leave? Just because she's holding a gun to him and saying, oh, he has nothing to do with it. He's just a nobody. Yet he, the, uh, a few scenes later, uh, before this, the cop saw his YouTube video and the surveillance camera and pretty much was convinced that that was the same guy. Why he let him go in again, don't, you know, I get it. He's supposed to come out in the arm of the dead so he can't arrest him, blah, blah, blah. But that ending didn't make sense whatsoever. So it was a bit of a, of a disappointment. Um, but all in all, like I said, it was a, a very entertaining movie. And I know I mentioned Hans Zimmer earlier by mistake. I was meant to say Zack Snyder. But the, the soundtrack, the score was beautiful. Anything that the man Hans Zimmer puts his hands on is is beautiful and i'm there for it yes is he perfect no but he's known as the the hands of god 
and by good reason. He definitely gives this movie. He elevates this movie as a as opposed to hinder it. So I'm I'm kind of wondering if Zack Snyder kind of has made a deal with Hans Zimmer saying, "Hey, whenever I do a movie, you're my composer. And I'm going to pay you a a shitload of money." But Hey, I ain't mad at it. I love to hear him and the, what he creates and it definitely has a superhero feel to it. And he's co-composer because he's also doing it with this other dude that I never heard before. And you could tell the difference when Hans is there. It's like this epicness happening. And then when his other guy is there, it's more like this modern, poppy, techno y kind of a thing. Which, again, it worked good together in this movie. But... Maybe there's a crowd out there for this one. I didn't understand why this movie had to happen. But nonetheless, I watched it. I was entertained. So for me, this movie is a C plus just because it was kind of equal parts bad, equal parts good. And again, I don't understand why this needed to happen. Now, this is not anything against the score, the acting. I thought those were both great. I thought the script was fairly weak and I thought that a lot of the plot devices to move the story along were kind of just convenient there. And I get it for a lot of these movies, especially Bankai's movies, these convenient plot story, plot, uh, plot devices to move the story along are just that, you know, convenient. So anyways, those are just my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. And like always, that's a wrap.